This is the Mammoth Transmitting Station at Troitwich, and you've probably seen it sat lumbering over the M5 motorway from the car. Behind these electronic gates that replaced an older set on these posts is a long wave and medium wave broadcast facility that was built in 1934. It actually sits in Dodder Hill, just outside the village of Witchbold, near Droitwich in Worcestershire, and is the location of the British Broadcasting Corporation's most powerful longwave transmitter. Today the site is owned and operated by Arkiva. The Droitwich station stands on a 55.5 acre site and was brought into operation on the 7th of October 1934 with a 150 kilowatt transmitter which radiated the national program on longwave, callsign 5XX, replacing the 30 kilowatt longwave transmitter over at Daventry. The Midland Regional Transmitter at Troitwich was brought into operation on the 17th of February 1935, replacing the Daventry Transmitter with the callsign 5GB. By mid-1934, construction of the transmitter building was complete, with the main transmitter hall consisting of two floors, with a balcony running around a central well. The balcony would carry the transmitters and control desk, while the motor generating plant would be installed below the well on the ground floor. Above the hall was a large skylight which was 20 feet by 50 feet in dimension. July 1934 saw the testing of the new longwave transmitter with the opening date set for September the 6th. All transmitters were controlled from a control position in the gallery facing the main entrance and other areas of the site have housed high tension rectifiers, four six cylinder diesel alternators, fuel storage tanks and engine water cooling ponds whose equipment for the high power valves in transmitters was installed in a crypt below ground level. In February of 1941, two new high power transmitters were installed which radiated the BBC's European service on medium wave and later the light programme on long wave. During World War II, coded messages read during normal programming broadcasts were sent to the French resistance using transmitters from Droitwich. In 1943, a new 300-foot self-supporting mast was built to the north of the site. The bolted steel lattice construction, manufactured by the American firm Bloor Knox, was supplied under the lease-lend agreement. Erecting this mast was a particularly hazardous operation, because of the close proximity of the other aerials radiating power. From the 1960s, many modifications and changes were made at Troitwich, so we'll run through a selected timeline. An extensive re-equipment program started in 1961, when two modern transmitters for the Midland Home Service, with one acting as a spare, replaced the original Troitwich national and regional transmitters. Two similar transmitters working together were installed and took over the long wave light program from the 1941 transmitters on the 18th of September 1962. September 1967 saw the home service reserve transmitter brought into use for the start of Radio 1 on 1214 kilohertz at 30 kilowatts. On the 2nd of September 1972, as part of a plan to de-regionalise Radio 4 in England, releasing frequencies for local radio, the Radio 4 frequency changed from 1088 kHz to 1052 kHz. On the 8th of February 1976, a new replacement 50 kW transmitter entered service for Radio 1 on 1214 kHz. The 23rd of November 1978 saw Radio 4 transferred onto 200 kHz longwave, Radio 1 transferred onto 1053 kHz from 1052 kHz, Radio 3 moved onto 1215 kHz from 1214 kHz, and a new transmitter brought into use on 693 kHz for Radio 2. On the 3rd of November 1981, a new replacement transmitter entered service for Radio 1 on 1053 kHz. 1983 to 1985 saw two smaller masts constructed, replacing the Bloor Knox Tower, which were then used for Radio 1 and Radio 3 on 1053 and 1215 kHz respectively. The 1st of February 1988 saw the long wave frequency change to 198 kHz from 200 kHz, and the 27th of August 1990 was the year Radio 5 replaced Radio 2 on 693 kHz. On the 28th of February 1992, Radio 3 on 1215 kHz closed down, but on April 30th 1993, Virgin Radio launched on the same frequency. 
On the 30th of June 1994, Radio 1 closed on 1053 kHz to be replaced by Talk Radio on the same frequency on the 14th of February 1995, and everything remained relatively unchanged until the 20th of January 2023 when Absolute Radio on 1215 closed down for good. Today the site has four broadcast masts. The larger two are masts A and B, and these support the Radio 4 longwave aerial which is suspended between the two 213 metre high or 700 foot guide steel lattice towers, which are 180 metres or 590 feet apart. This antenna forms a T-shape with a feed midway between the masts from this brick building below, and you can see the wires going down into the compound. The current Radio 4 longwave transmitter power is 500 kilowatts from masts A and B, and its signal can be heard throughout most of England, Wales and Ireland and in parts of Western Europe. There are two 198 kilohertz longwave transmitters in Scotland at Wester Glen and Burhead providing the Radio 4 service there. The carrier frequency is controlled by a rubidium atomic frequency standard in the transmitter hall, enabling the transmission to be used as an off-air frequency standard. This signal also carries radio data encoded using phase modulation, giving a time of day signal and radio teleswitch control signals for Economy 7 electric heating systems. The southernmost of these two main masts is bottom fed and forms the radiator for the Radio 5 Live service. BBC Radio 5 Live is broadcast on 693 kHz medium wave, providing coverage for most of the English Midlands and Wales at 150 kW, which is one of the strongest for that station, equal to Brookmans Park and second only to Moorside Edge. At the bottom of the mast there are these shed-like structures, which are huts for the now redundant lift equipment. The smaller masts are known as masts C and D, and they are both radiating masts forming a phased array which radiate the Talk Sport and Virgin radio signals on 1053 and 1215 kHz respectively, although Virgin Radio, later Absolute Radio, is currently off the air. Today Droitwich is a busy site, but it looks like it could be entering its twilight years. In 2011, as part of the BBC cuts, it was announced that there would be no reinvestment in Longwave, which means an eventual end to BBC Radio 4 in this part of the spectrum. The Guardian published a story in October 2011 saying that the transmitter relies upon a pair of glass valves, of which there are fewer than 10 left in the world, 
and the BBC didn't believe it was safe enough to manufacture more because slightly faulty replacements could cause catastrophic failure. January 2023 saw Absolute Radio close from Joitwich on 1215kHz. On the 30th of May 2023, the BBC announced that Radio 4 will stop broadcasting on Longwave in 2024. BBC Radio 5 Live's medium wave frequencies will fall silent by the end of 2027. And on the 10th of October 2022, Ofcom received a formal submission from TalkSport proposing to switch off 17 AM transmitter sites, reducing TalkSport's national medium wave transmitter network to five core high power sites. It's likely that by 2024, the main mast at Droitwich will only be used by Radio 5 Live, as this location is considered a core site, but the two smaller masts may be redundant. We can probably expect to see the removal of certain antenna systems from the site in the coming years, as the decay of longwave and medium wave services across the UK progresses further. Thank you.